Everyone, I, uh, I need to apologize. I've made a lot of mistakes in the past, and it's time for me to come clean and teach you guys how you can avoid those mistakes when messing around with your 3D printer. Welcome back to Think Inside the Box, where today I'm going to teach you about the maintenance of your 3D printer and how you can avoid the mistakes that I've made in the past. I'm sorry for the misleading opening. I am an ass. Anyway, welcome back to Think Inside the Box. Now this one, all of the materials are relatively small and I didn't feel like going through them all and actually stuffing them into the box. So as we go through this video, you're gonna see a couple of shots like this. Hey everybody, it's Editor Hugel here. The Hugel from the future that edits the videos. Anyway, I did actually end up going through and putting everything in a box as well as getting these awesome shots here of everything that you need for this project. Uh, um, Huckle in the future who does the editing, put a list right here of the materials that they'll need. I'm relatively 100% positive that all the materials you need will actually fit in a box about mm, yay big. I have the main crate right up there, but it's kind of up on a shelf and I don't want to get it down, so. Let's get started on 3D printer maintenance. Give me a second. I forgot to turn on these lights here. Check this out. I got this app on my phone. I can do this. Watch me. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Oh, it's sick. Anyway, we're going to get started on the cleaning process of the 3D printer. I love this machine. I've talked about it in detail both on college papers and in the last video. Well, maybe not too much detail in the last video, but I love this printer, but let's actually talk about how we're going to clean this. Now one last thing that you're also going to need for this project is something to listen to while you clean it. It's not really that important, I just like to listen to music while I clean stuff, but for me, I'm going to be listening to Macintosh Plus, which I got on vinyl record, I actually have it on the player right now. I just like vinyl, I love this album, so this is what I'm going to be listening to. Unfortunately you guys can't hear it because copyright is such a pain, but oh well. So. Before you actually start cleaning your 3D printer, just like Jordan Peterson says, you gotta clean your room. So make sure that there's stuff that you don't need. Make sure you put it in places where it needs to belong. For example, sponge to go in the sink. I just made that throw around the corner. Are you see? Ah! Make sure you clean up all your stuff. So you got tools and everything. Your tool, pencil, tool kit. This one goes to here. This one goes here. This is a cleaning filament. We'll need this later. It's nice to have a toolbox. You can just, you know, toss them in. That wasn't supposed to happen. And wow, it's clean. Wow, that's amazing. It looks much better. A special thanks to Zach Friedman of Void Star Labs for inspiring me to print this model, which is a toolbox that actually attaches to your brackets of your 3D printer. It's actually pretty sick. You have to attach it to this bracket. I thought it attached to the very end of this area, like back here, but it doesn't. It kind of sits on top. It's pretty cool. I absolutely really love it. It's got an area here for your plastic scraper, an area here for your flush cutters, two little slots where you can put either your glue stick or maybe your pencil. I like to hold an X-Acto knife and a pencil. These right here are my favorite pencils. It's a Dixon Triconderoga because it has three sides, and it's actually a rouleau triangle, and these are awesome. I also have a bottle of super glue back here because super glue is one of the best inventions known to mankind. You can use it for fixing stuff, and also if you happen to cut yourself, probably using those flush cutters, uh, you can, you know, fix up the cut really fast. I also have a glue stick and a silicone beaker. Put it in there because the perfect size for the hole, and you can just put it right there. It's awesome. I love this little toolbox. So, to get started, we're going to turn it on using this little switch right here. It's on the back of the printer. My power cable is covering up my face. That's not very cash money. But, little power switch right here. Let's flip that real quick. So, now that we have our printer on, you're going to want to get that taken care of. I know that I talked about unloading filament in the last episode about 3D printing, but this one is all about maintenance, so I'm always going to reiterate stuff just in case it's the first video somebody's ever seen. So if it gets a little bit annoying to be repetitive, eh, too bad. Well, it's always good to get your information fresh. You're gonna click this button here, and you're gonna preheat for the plastic that you have in your hot end. 
mine right now I have PLA. I'm going to click that, it's going to start warming up. Now is a good time to talk about what all these numbers mean. Of course, you have your status update right here, proofs i3 Mark III S is okay, sweet, means we're in the clear. Right here, this is the temperature of your hot end, the nozzle, this is where everything comes out. We're at 110 degrees Celsius already, which is already the boiling point of water. The rest right here, this is the heat bed. So right now we're already at 32 degrees Celsius. This warms up after your nozzle. So it heats the nozzle first and then it heats up the heat, heat bed. This right here tells us where on the Z axis we are. And this tells us the completion status of your 3D print. So at the last print that I made is already at 100%. So we're doing okay. There it is, I did it first try, I'm a genius. So, now that it's fully preheated, you can go back into your settings. Unload filament. Unload filament! Click now! So, you just unloaded the filament from your printer, correct? Now what you want to do is you want to take your film it and put it away in its box. Luckily, I always keep the box on me as well as the plastic bag that it came with and a moisture absorber. Do not eat. Desiccant. So what you want to do, take your filament off the holder, make sure you keep it tight so it doesn't get tangled up. If it gets tangled up, you run the risk of the gears pulling so tightly on the tangled up filament that it'll either A, break the gears of your printer, or B, end up breaking your filament holder. Which is what happened to me, I had to super glue it back together. It took a while, but I'd rather, you know, not have to do that. Probably a good idea. So, to put your filament away. See this hole right here? You wanna loop it through, like I just did, and then go right back in this hole there. Now, you run no risk of getting your filament tied up underneath of itself. I've had it happen. It's not pretty. Then you want to take your plastic bag. Plastic bag. Plastic, plastic bag. 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 There's only a few people that are going to get that joke. Filament. Plastic bag. Wow, that's insane. Moisture pack in the bag. I like to put it in the hole where the spool holder goes. Now you've got that there. Pull this in on itself. So you've got a relatively, not, not like an airtight seal, but there's at least a bit of a seal to it. And I like to stuff it into the box so that the part right here that I just covered up will end up getting squashed down by this little fin from the cardboard box. And the reason why you do that is because you don't want moisture in your filament. If moisture gets in, it becomes very brittle, it's not great to print with, because as it prints, the water that is inside the filament will start to boil, leaving bubbles and specks, and it's just an all around not a good time. Moist. Keep your film in its bag with a moisture absorber. Keep it in the box. It's gonna extend the lifespan of your filament by a really long time, especially with something like nylon, which will literally absorb moisture out of the air in like five minutes to make it unprintable. It is absolute hell to work with from what I've heard. And then I actually have an area up here where I keep all of my filament. It's just a huge black tote that I got from Lowe's and it actually is the perfect size to hold all my filament. So I'm just gonna put it right back up there and we're good to go. I'm not putting the purple stuff away because after this video we're done recording, there's some stuff that I'm gonna print. So I'm not gonna put this one away yet, but I will eventually. And I think you get the process. I don't need to show it twice. All right, so while your printer is hot right now, you're gonna wanna use a little bit of nozzle cleaning filament. This stuff's awesome because it cleans your nozzle. The inside bit. We'll get to the outside bit later. I promised to myself that I would only use tools that I introduced into the beginning. No extra tools later. And I forgot to throw in scissors. So, 
guess this is what we're doing now. Wait, hold on. I showed you my Swiss Army knife. Why don't I just use that? How easy was that? <laughs> so, you're going to take your cleaning filament you have right here. Nip off the end to make sure that you have it in a 45. There you go. And then up in the top we go. You should see it come out of the bottom here any second. Three, two, one. And I spurt myself. That's not good. Mm-hmm. So, so after, so don't burn yourself. My mistake. Oh boy, that's hot. Yep, that's really hot. Ooh, that's 215 degrees Celsius, people. That is a, that's a nasty burn to have right on the uh, the crease of your finger. That's a uh, whoo. I'm gonna grab some ice, but before I do, before I do that, you want to tell your printer that it is extruding with the correct color. Yes, that is if it's actually clean. And then you want to unload that filament just like we did with the previous filament. And what do you know? That's pretty good. I'm gonna grab some ice now because uh, oh my god, that's really painful. Okay, so we unloaded the filament. We cleaned the inside, but now we gotta clean the outside. And for that, we're gonna use this wire brush that I found. Uh, just happened to find one. So underneath this, there's the nozzle, the hot end, and a couple other bits that I burnt myself on. Don't do that, it's not good. Okay, there's the gear extruder, there's the fan, and then all the way here is our hot end. You got your steel brush, right? See this right here? This is the... Well, that's not good. And well, it's working. Basically, you want to really want to get in here and kind of scrub this. Well, it's hot. Let's get in here. Oh, that's not good. Keep an extra hand up here, and let's clean this. Now, what some people do is that they actually attach a little piece of steel to a drill, or a little piece of brush to a drill, and start cleaning it that way. But I'm not going to do that. I want to do this the old-fashioned way. You know. Elbow grease. Oh, I didn't realize I was shaking the camera that whole time. That's not good. You know what, let's just uh, let's just cut to where this is clean. Alrighty then. Let's see how we did. I mean, you know what? It's better than when we started. You know, it's not as black anymore. Uh, I think that's as clean as I'm going to be able to get it right now. But you should do this monthly. That way, you're going to get this way cleaner than it. Uh, Will be. Wow, it's hard to get this angle right. Uh, now that that's clean, let's talk about another important aspect, which is above the hot end, which is this fan. How in the world to be clean that fan, as well as this fan over here? Both of them are important. Let's start with this one, though. I'm just going to go in here with a little toothbrush that I've got, kind of go around it real quick. You wouldn't believe how much dust gets pulled up in here. And now I'm gonna hit it with a can of air. Just to make sure we've got all the dust out of there. I'm gonna come in from the back side. I'm phrasing. And I'm also gonna hit this fan over here. It wouldn't hurt to also hit your electronics box back here, so that's what I'm gonna do just to make sure that there's nothing gunking it up in there. Also, this can gets really cold as I use it, so it really helps to cool down my finger, because I burnt myself. Oh my god, it's really painful with that. Cool! We did it. Okay, now this part's also really important. You see this tiny little nut right here? Yeah, that that's the one. On the other, this, no, on the opposite side, there's a little spot where you can put Allen wrench and open this baby up. Basically, what I'm doing, I'm opening this up. Come on. So I can get inside and make sure there's no gunk in there that's going to jam everything up. Keep your finger here to hold that nut in place. This is the bolt that I took out. Come on camera, focus on the bolt. All right, so this is the bolt that I took out of the 3D printer. 
But be very careful because there's this spring that goes in. When you tighten it down, the spring gets compressed. So you want to make sure you keep a firm hand on both sides so that your bolt or the spring doesn't go flying off. Both of these are really, really important. So hang on to them, okay? You're gonna flip up this hatch over on the printer, just like this. And let's take a look inside. Let's take a look. And hey, you know what? That actually looks pretty clean. There's a little bit of dust in there, so I'm just gonna spray that out real quick. Oh, see? Haha! <laughs> a little piece of plastic got shot out. Uh, that's why we do this. <laughs> that actually worked to spray more stuff out the bottom. That's awesome. Alright, I think that's enough. We're good. That's clean. Make sure that okay, we're gonna try putting the bolt back in. It's kind of a pain because this is why people should have three hands. But we gotta hold this down, shove the bolt through without losing. And I nailed it first try. Let's go! Oh, and you guys didn't see it. I did not nail it the first try, but there it is. I got it. I'm not doing that again. So we're not quite done dealing with some hot stuff baby this evening. We still have the hot bed here, which is relatively cold compared to me burning myself on the hot end. So let's mess around with the hot bed and let's actually clean it properly. So those of you that watched the last episode of Think Inside the Box will know that I absolutely love 3D glue. This stuff is awesome. but. Applying multiple thin layers can cause a bit of a hassle. So, in order to clean that, I'm just gonna use my bottle of isopropyl alcohol. I have a few bottles of this stuff. I'm just gonna apply some right on here. And I'm also gonna use either a plastic scraper or the metal one. For this one, I'm gonna use the plastic one because I don't wanna scratch the metal. And you wanna go in just really easy. Just small little circles. And this is actually gonna take a little, bit, a little while. Just kind of want to go kind of like this, real easy. Don't want to gouge it, you're just trying to scrape off the top layer. I think I might, I think I might have to use the metal one. It's a little bit sharper. This is also where having something to listen to comes in handy, which is going to happen now. Macintosh Plus, where are you? There we go. And now music's playing. Hey, you're back! Took me long enough. I've been, uh, basically been doing this for about, what, two hours now since I turned the camera off? And even that was about 45 minutes of footage that you just saw. So I wasn't going to record all of it because it got just way too boring for me. And I wasn't going to edit all of that. So finally, I got it clean. Trust me, it takes a while to get stuff clean, but it's worth it. Take your time. Be patient with it. Don't give up. Don't be, don't, don't be giving up midway through. You gotta, once you start something, finish it. Just like how we're gonna finish the rest of the printer. Let's go. But that's only just the nozzle and the hotbed. We still need to clean our Z-axis, lube our stepping motors, as well as lube our 
Rods. I did the Rods deal thing. I forgot the name. All right, so let's work our way from the bottom up. We're gonna start off with these rods here down at the bottom. I'm gonna slide this forward. Take your towel, go underneath. And then I use three in one oil. It lubricates, cleans, and prevents rust, and it's awesome. Just a few drops. The towel is there so you don't get anything on the uh, parts of the printer. They don't want you to get anything on. Great description there, Chase. I, wow, I know. It's, right, it's like I'm some sort of like genius YouTuber. Oh, man. So smart. I'm also going to do this back here. Doing this left one first, just kind of stuff it underneath. Drip, drip, drip. You rub it just a little bit. All the way back. All right, you're not like shoving it. I'm just gonna give it just a little push. Next, what we're gonna do, so it may not look like it, but these, this gear right here that you're looking at that has the, kind of got a giant screw. It's actually a Z screw. It's a little bit dirty. So let's clean it. And how we're gonna clean that. Okay, so because I turned the printer off while the head was up, it now thinks that that is the new zero axis. So I told it to start printing something. It'll heat up, start to print, and then it'll actually automatically go home. And then from there, I can adjust the Z axis. There we go, it's fully heated. It should start moving around any second now. There it is. It's gonna move down to find home. And then I can cancel. To cancel, you press this X button. Don't ever can't you press this X button any other time. Basically, don't ever press it unless you ask me first. But don't blow up my DMs, please. God, no. All right, we're good. Now is when I can actually adjust the Z axis. And luckily, I've got my towel here. I've got my bottle out on my ball. Just kind of, kind of squirt some on here. You're going hit, to hit, hit your button. You're going to move down to settings. Push the button. Move down. Move axis. Move down. Move Z. And tell it to start moving up. So we're going to go up a little bit. And now we're going to use our alcohol soaked rag. Kind of grab hold of our Z axis here and start going up. Good. Good. Okay. Then you want to grab up here as high as you can. Start moving down. This is going to clean the whole thing. Except for that part up at the top. We'll do that again in a second. And look at how much gunk we just got off. Is that crazy? We're going to do that again. Except we're going to grab a different area. Maybe like that one right there that still has alcohol on it. Kind of loop your fingers around and go back up. Be sure not to crush your fingers, so go slow with it, okay? And boom! That's beautiful! Look at how, here, I'm gonna move this back up. Look at how beautiful and clean that baby looks compared to that one. Wow, it's crazy, isn't it? Look at that. I mean, that is, that is dark, that is black. That's silver. It's nice and clean. It's the future. That's kind of grimy. Uh, we're, uh, let's let's clean that off. Basically, just repeat the process that I just did. Now, luckily, we are done dealing with some hot stuff, baby, tonight. So, luckily, you're not going to burn yourself again now that we're done dealing with hot beds and nozzles. But you do have to open this up. And for that, I'm just going to use my. Leatherman Wave, which is awesome. It's like a Swiss Army knife, but it's got uh, it's got these needle nose pliers, which is awesome. So what you want to do is you want to open up an area here, which unscrews, and an area here, which unscrews. Let me get you a better shot. You see this little bit right here? This is actually 3D printed. Actually, a ton of the parts on this printer are 3D printed. From the orange bit here, here, the black bit here, the orange bit that I've got over here, orange bit here, 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 here. It's all over the place, but you just want to use your Leatherman, 
just unscrew this just a bit. There we go. Now you can use your fingers. There we go. Just to make sure that your step, oh, well, I was covering it up, but you just want to kind of twist this with your fingers. Boom, 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 boom. Just enough to get it up. Now, down in this area is where you want to get some of your oil. Just make sure that your stepper motors are nice and lubricated. There we go. Don't want them getting gummed up on you. And then you're going to twist this back down. And then you want to lock it into place. There you go. Same thing on the other side. Repeat the process. All right, so your Y axis is clean and lubricated. Your Z axis is clean and the stepper motors are lubricated, but you haven't cleaned your X axis. For that, you grab your rag again. Often you would grab a new rag by this point, but I can't find any, so I'm just using the same one. Uh, if you're following along at home, make sure you're always grabbing a new rag, but I'm just gonna come in here, clean off my X axis. Cool, that's clean. Make sure that these, whoa. Make sure that these are clean on your Z axis. There, and now we are in the home stretch. What you wanna do is where is your oil? Underneath, drop here, drop here. Bottom one, drop here. Drop here, move your x-axis, go in again, drop here, drop here, drop here, and drop here, and now move your, you're going to move your x-axis the other way. Now that is nice and lubricated, now we're just going to put drop all the way up here at the top of your lube, and it'll eventually work its way down. I'll drop up here on this side. I'll drop here, and I'll drop here. But, we're, but remember, we're impatient, so we're gonna move the Z-axis up and down. Now we're gonna move it down again. Actually, let's go finish moving all the way up. We're gonna make sure that our axes are nice and lubed up the next time we go to print. Perfect. That's what I like to see. So now we're almost done. Our final step is to make sure that you're using your Allen wrenches just to make sure that all of your bolts and screws and nuts are snug. You don't want to reef on them just to make sure that they're snug. You don't want to strip anything out. You don't want to break anything. Just get them just hmm, perfect. Hey, it's Chase from the future again. Uh, so there's one thing that I forgot to talk about, and that is bed adhesion. So in my previous 3D printing videos, I've talked about bed adhesion before, but I wanted to recover it again because it's a little bit of 3D printer maintenance. So on one side of my bed, I have a layer of blue tape, and then on the other side of my bed, I have no blue tape on it. So it's all nice and clean. Now on this side, I'll sometimes use some hairspray, some purple school glue, stuff like that. Uh, the 3D Gloop is really great, but I've had a couple of issues with it, but it is a really fantastic product. You just gotta learn how to use it. And it's also kind of a huge pain to clean off so I can uh, get some smooth prints. But once it is cleaned off, I get very, very smooth prints. As you can see here, there's no or, oh no. There's no nicks or dings or anything uh, on the top of this, and it's a very smooth surface. Look how smooth that is, oh my god. Anyway, but that's what happens if you clean your bed really well. You can use the blue tape. Now, there is an issue that I had, and if you had watched one of my live streams recently, 
uh, you would have known that I put super glue on here after a very tall print, which happened to be the giant leap for Gracie, which I actually have right here. So we ended up bringing it with us, and hey, look at that. The ends turned out really nice. Kind of. We had to print them separately, and then Gracie melted them together with a flat iron, or a curling iron for her hair, but uh, turned out pretty nice, considering what we had to work with. Because it's such a tall print, I tried to save it by putting super glue on the bed. That ended up being a really bad idea, and super glue bonded to the bed, but not to the plastic, because there was a hole in the center, and I put the glue right in the center, instead of where the plastic was going to actually be. So, to help me get this super glue off of the build plate, I have, from Hobby Lobby, what's called a D-bonder for all super glues. Now this stuff I haven't messed with before, but I figured, hey, I don't want to use acetone because that'll probably end up messing with my bed. And this D-bonder will probably work pretty nicely for the purposes that I want to use it for. So here we go, just to, just to open it up. I'm just gonna put a couple globs in here. That's not super glue. I don't think that's super glue, but I'm gonna put it there just to be safe. And I'm just gonna give that a little bit of time to sit. Now, there's a lot of different brands of blue tape. So, what I suggest for you is just classic trial and error. You know, I honestly cannot recommend trial and error enough because that's how I learn really well. And you know, you may find a blue tape that works really well for you. You may find a blue tape that doesn't stick at all. And so now you have to try something else. I personally like to use very thin tape, like this right here. So that way if, for example, a piece of tape did get ripped or scratched or dinged or nicked, I can just replace that strip instead of having to replace a super wide full strip of tape or having to cut out a section and cut out a section of tape. I don't like that. So that's the idea between as to why I use the uh, thin tape. But you know, trial and error. Find out what works best for you. Now this debonder stuff is actually working really well. Okay, so that's nice and clean. Don't worry about the discoloring. That's just leftover residue from the uncure. But to show you what you do with the tape, the stuff that I use is actually Scotch blue tape. That just happens to be what works best for me. So I'm just going to pull off a strip of this tape real quick. A little bit longer than what I need. Okay, quite accidentally quite a bit longer than what I need. But we're just going to go in here, make sure that lines up there. We're going to make sure it lines up over here as well. There we go. And then we can pull over the corner, pull it over the corner. And I actually have my X-Acto knife. I'm just going to go in right here. Perfect. And I'm also, that's too short. Learn from my mistakes, people. That's why I make these videos. You can learn right alongside me. Mm -hmm. No big deal. And that's why I like to do these little small strips, because then if one gets really just nasty, like that one there, I can just replace that. That one doesn't really need replacing right now, though, but I'm using that one as an example. You can go in, you can smooth out these little creases and folds. And now you have yourselves a perfect surface for 3D printing on to make sure that your parts aren't going to come peeling off. Now this is for stuff that you don't really care about how the bottom surface finish is going to look. If you really want it to be nice and smooth, I would recommend taking this, flipping it over, and then finding a way to print without any adhesion. Or I would recommend using hairspray because that makes a very smooth surface finish. Just trial and error, that's what I can recommend for your bed adhesion. I know I've talked about it in the videos before and I'll probably talk about it more in videos in the future, but that's really just like, <laughs> that's just scratching the surface. Wow, I'm gonna kill myself. Anyway, now back to the Huckle from the past. There we go.
boom, nailed it. And with that, if you've been following along at home, you are now done with the maintenance of your 3D printer. This is the maintenance that happens with mine. It may be different for yours. I don't know what you have, but probably going to be a little bit different, unless you have a Prusa i3 Mark III S. My God, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thus concludes another episode of Think Inside the Box. I know I didn't whip out the box this time to put all the parts in, but I think... No, no, I did. I just didn't want to do it before the video. I ended up doing all the recording after the video. But yeah, all the parts fit inside the box. Brush, air can, alcohol, all the bits and pieces. Yeah, it's pretty cool. If you have a 3D printer of your own, happy printing. And for those of you that don't have a 3D printer yet, I highly recommend it because it's a lot of fun. You can make a lot of stuff and maintenance is relatively low, especially considering that I only have to do this once every few months. Maybe once a month if I'm printing heavily, like daily, then I'll do it once a month. But if I'm only doing it like once every few days, eh, a couple of months, three or four actually. We're done. I guess that's the end of the episode. I guess it's time to roll the credits, but darn, I didn't come up with an outro joke. That sucks. Tune in next time to Think Inside the Box, where I attempt to make the Redstone of Asia, not using this 3D printer, but that 3D printer. It's going to get a little intense. Oh, oh, oh. oh boy, is it going to get intense.